Now in this demo, we're going to use the Azure AD application and .NET console application that I previously created and modify them to demonstrate two strategies to account for throttling in our applications. The first strategy that I'm going to employ employs working with the HTTP client object to call the base Microsoft Graph REST API. This approach will enable you to see the underlying protocol responses and how you can handle them. But the second uh, strategy that we can employ uses the Microsoft Graph.NET SDK, and that takes into account throttling responses that are returned by the service. And it automatically queues them up and retries them uh, based on the response that it gets. This approach is going to greatly simplify your application code as you don't have to incorporate the retry logic that's in, because it's all included in the SDK. But this exercise or this demo that I'm going to run does expect or assume that I've already created the Azure AD app and the .NET console app in the previous demo. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to implement a Microsoft Graph REST API throttling retry strategy. So as I said in the previous demo, um, I created a .NET console app that triggers a throttling response uh, from Microsoft Graph by submitting many requests to the same mailbox for the same user at the very same time, or as close to the same time as possible. Now I'm going to modify the app to implement a strategy to determine if a request is being throttled. And in the case it is throttled, the application should wait for the time specified by Microsoft Graph before it retries the request. So what I'm going to do is I'm first going to start by creating a new file in my project called messages.cs. And I'm just going to go ahead and paste that in. Let's close the console here. This class is going to be used by JSON, uh, by the JSON deserializer to translate a JSON response into a message object. Now I'm going to add a method to implement the delayed retry strategy. The application is going to be modified to first get a list of messages from the current user's mailbox and then the issue and then issue a separate request for the details of each message. So in most scenarios, a separate request will trigger Microsoft Graph to throttle all the requests. Now to address this, I, my code should inspect each response for situations when the request has been throttled. And in those situations, the code should check for the presence of a retry after header in the response that specifies the number of seconds my app should wait before it issues another request. But in the case where that header is not present, I should have a default value that I should fall back on. So back within the program.cs file, I'm going to add a new method. Let's scroll down a little bit farther. Right before the load app settings, called get message detail. Now, the part where we have this add code here, I'm going to replace that with the following code. So, if there's a successful response, it's going to return the deserialized response back to the caller uh, to display the message. Now, let me go up and let me add a new using statement for this. So, I'm going to come over here and do using newtonsoft.json. So, let me go back to the method that I just added. Now, right after this wait, I'm going to add in a little bit more code. So what this code is going to be doing, it's going to check to see if there's a throttle response. And if it is, it's going to add, it's going to do some additional work. So here we can see it was a status OK. It's perfectly fine. It ran just as we would expect. But I want to add in another check to see if it's been throttled. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an else statement right here to our code. Make sure we can see this lost my code. Here we go. All right. So we're doing the normal request that we see that we saw up here and then I'm writing the results out. It's checking to see, was it okay? So was it a 200 that came back? And if it is, then we get the message detail. Otherwise, if it wasn't, check to see if it was the status code is for too many requests, which is a 429. What it does, it will then set a delay to two seconds before the request is made. So my default delay is going to be set to two seconds. If the retry header value is present and it is greater than two seconds, then I'm going to use that value to override the, the default delay. Then it's going to set the thread to sleep that you see here for the number of seconds that we told it to delay. And then it's going to recursively call the exact same request to retry the request. So in the cases where the response does not include a retry after header, you really should implement an exponential back off strategy um, th in this code, the application will initially pause for two seconds before retrying the request, but future requests will double the delay if the Microsoft Graph uh, continues to throttle the request. 
In a real world application, this should have an upper limit on how long that you're gonna have this delay so you don't avoid a situation where users are left with an unresponsive experience. So now we wanna go through and update the application to use our new retry strategy. So the next step is to update the main method to use uh, so that it, the application is gonna use our new intelligent throttling strategy. So I wanna go find, scroll up, looking for the, the method that we have here uh, in our application where we're getting a reference to the client. There we go, there's our get authenticated client right here. And then I wanna delete all of this code that actually triggered uh, all of those uh, error requests. So we'll go ahead and delete all of that. And now I'm gonna add the following code that's gonna use our new strategy. This code is gonna request the top 100 messages from the current user's mailbox and then deserialize the response into a typed object uh, that I previously created. Now that I've done that, I'm gonna add in a little bit more code just after this. This is gonna create individual requests for each message these tasks are created as asynchronous tasks that will be executed in parallel. So you can see we're just going through and building up all these tasks um, and adding them to a task collection. And then finally, once I've built up all those tasks, I'm going to then execute all of those tasks in parallel by calling the task.winAllTasks. When all the work is complete, let's display the results. So here down at the very end, I'll then display the results and it'll show me how long everything took. Um, or I'll stop the stopwatch and show me how long everything took. So now it's time to test our application. So what I'll do is I'll start by doing the .NET build and .NET run again in our application. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and grab the username, I'll paste that in, and I'm gonna paste in the password as well. And now we'll wait for this to run. So see we're retrieving all these different messages coming across. Some of them are being queued, but we're not getting any errors coming back here. So depending on the speed of my internet connection and my workstation, I may get requests um, that may or may not be uh, uh, triggered uh, for throttling or may trigger Microsoft Graph to throttle me. If the application runs fast enough, we'll see some instances where Microsoft Graph returned an HTTP status code 4, 429 as indicated by too many request entries. So here it's getting all the different messages and then it's gonna go issue all of those requests at one time. So just give it a minute to go submit all the requests in parallel. There we go. Now we can see some errors that are kicking back here. So we can see a couple of these like sleeping messages that are showing up. And that's because we're getting the 429s back from Microsoft Graph. And our application is pausing for a second to go pull that uh, information back out. So we can see one of those. Here's a couple of them right here. So the response code got too many requests too quickly. And then so it went to sleep for a second um, because that's how long Microsoft Graph said to wait. So the important thing that I want you to take notice of here is that the application completed successfully. It got all 100 messages, even though some of the requests were rejected because they were being throttled by Microsoft Graph.